So 600 kilograms. <clears throat> this has been coming for a long time. It looks like we're going to have um, an influx maybe of some quite, quite nice aircraft, quite modern aircraft, as well as um, changes, um, increased max takeoff mass for the aircraft that we've already got. Currently, the target is for a regulatory requirements to be in position to enable 600 kilogram microlites from early May 2021. By that, I mean that there should be regulations which um, cover licensing requirements. Now, they've been agreed and focusing on differences training, um, and I'm, I'm really pleased with the outcome of that. More later. Um, the airworthiness requirements are in hand, not quite um, finished yet, um, but there's, we're seeking alignment as close as possible with the German and Czech codes, which are those which are used, the majority of seem to, or states seem to use those as guidance um, across Europe, so that that would allow, hope, we're hoping a fairly easy transition from aircraft from those countries into the UK. And the manufacturing requirements are in hand as well. And again, we'll take into account systems outside the UK. So that's all looking pretty good for the introduction of, of the aircraft um, or the, the ability to introduce the aircraft from early, early in May. <clears throat> One of the things that we're very aware of is um, significant changes, potential changes in flying from one end of our microlite weights up to the maximum 600 kilograms and so we developed some guidance um, specifically for 600 kilograms but we've also just looked at the general guidance of different differences training which is um, which we developed which is sort of missing really from our um, instructor and examiner guide so the, the new section for guidance has been written um, it's not in the guide as yet, uh, because there's some other guide amendments and they're all going together. But um, it is in a draft form on the, on the BMA website, which you can download straight away. Uh, differences, we just talk about the differences training in this section. So we're just sort of defining it as training is given to pilots to prepare them for flying aircraft, which have differences to those aircraft that they are used to. And uh, some differences training is mandated by regulation and must be taken, some not, but it's sensible to consider. So, for example, a pilot whose only experience is on a Pegasus XL decides to go and buy a um, PM quick, it's definitely a sensible thing to do is to take uh, differences training, even though it's the same control type and it's not mandated. Some differences training is mandated, and we'll just look at that shortly. Uh, the mandated differences training must be given by a flight instructor entitled to instruct on the aeroplane on which the training is being given, recorded in, a in the holder's personal flying logbook and endorsed and signed by the instructor conducting the training. That's just standard. We know that for mandated differences training. When the differences training has been completed, this is a key thing, both the instructor and the pilot should feel confident that the pilot fully understands the difference and is practiced in managing it. So when the difference is training finished, that, 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 that should be, that should be um, what, how, you, how you can conclude that the, the training is being sufficient and finished. So some specifics about differences training. The ANO is going to be reviewed. Um, it's, under, it's under review now. Um, and uh, ready for 600 kilograms, and there have been some changes to the required differences training. <clears throat> so we've got here now um, the control type as now, obviously, um, if you've got only experience in three axis controls and holders previous, ex ex sorry, if, if the aircraft has three axis controls and the holders previous training and has only been in weight shift controls, you need differences training as a legal requirement. And the same the other way around, um, has flex wing controls and wants to fly three axis, you do need a differences training. It's a legal requirement. Um, an operation off water as well, where uh, the aircraft be operated from water during takeoff and landing. Again, you need differences training 
um, and you also have to pass that exam, private or professional seamanship examination. So those, those are already there, uh, they're standard. <coughs> For 600 kilogram microlites, we are, there is going to be an introduction of, uh, I, and I said earlier on that the license, I'm pleased with the way that the licensing discussions have gone. Um, and there won't be a requirement for a test or another rating, but there will be a requirement where if you're flying an aircraft um, which has a maximum uh, takeoff mass over the standard 450, 4725, or if it's a seaplane 495, and your only experience has been uh, in aircraft with a maximum takeoff mass under that amount, you will have to do differences training. So one of the questions was, well, if I'm flying an aircraft at 450 and it's going to go to 500, do I have to take differences training? You do, but the differences training will be geared to the difference that you're going to undertake. So the aircraft will have probably slightly higher, may have a slightly higher stall speed, there'd be difference in uh, performance, and that would be the differences training. For pilots who want to come and fly microlites and who might have experience of flying heavier aircraft, if they've not flown an aircraft with a maximum takeoff mass of up to or under 450, 4725 or 495 for float plane, then they also have to have differences training. So the other question was, if somebody, you know, do, do pilots of heavier aircraft have to have differences training to fly microlites? They do. And in fact, the SEP holders um, have to undergo a differences training as a requirement of the ANO, and SSEA holders have to actually hold a microlite class rating. There may be some changes to that in a review of licensing, which is due towards sometime towards late spring, early summer. An addition which we've not, which we've, um, which we've not <laughs> seen before, but it is sort of good practice and will be applicable to microlites is for differences training for equipment and layout of, of the aircraft. So um, there will be a requirement for differences or there, there's going to be a difference training for, requirement for differences training for tricycle undercarriage, uh, a tail wheel, supercharger or turbocharger, variable pitch propeller, electronic flight information systems, autopilots, more than one engine or electric engine. If you don't have experience of flying with those, um, the, with, with those examples. This brings our differences training on this, on this, on this scope um, into alignment with the SSEA. And now that there's a big overlap with what will be microlites and what are SSEA, it makes sense not to have significant differences between the two licenses classes. <coughs> so, so in the case if you don't have experience in any of those um, bullet points and you want to fly an aircraft with them, you will have to do differences training. Differences training is sufficient so you become competent in the difference. Um, uh, for the, uh, if you want to download um, prior to the guide publication, uh, the differences training. If you go to the website, uh, look under information library, pilot licensing, um, go to the licensing page and you'll find um, um, a link there, downloads for information for instructors and examiners. If you follow that link, you get to the differences training up here um, on the next page. I just want to go back one. If you noticed below that red circle, the line below for downloads and more detailed information for examiners, follow this link. And what we've done there is we've, we've, we've repeated largely, we've added one or two um, individual documents to the examiners page, which is um, the one that um, Fiona referred to a little while ago. Right. Um, there's some questions, will any differences training be required for an aircraft up to 500 kilograms? I've answered that, yes, it will be. Um, 
The type conversion for 600 kilogram micro aircraft be mandatory for pilots and instructors. Uh, yes, if you've not flown aircraft up to those weights. If you have flown aircraft, um, uh, so for example, if you're an instructor or an examiner and you've got an SEP or um, SSEA class rating, you won't have to do differences training. Type conversion um, is right, it's sort of really more aircraft um, specific. Um, well, GA instructors who've never flown micro lights require mandatory specific type conversion. They do require differences training. Um, is there differences training syllabus being prepared? There isn't being, there isn't a syllabus. There is this guidance. But we're not saying what, what you, what and how you should carry it out for each specific part of the differences training. <clears throat> Finally, on the six hundred kilogram um, stuff, there will be um, some. That we're preparing a lot of question and answer. Um, uh, a lot of sort of question and answer examples so that you'll be able to uh, um, hopefully find the answer to all your questions in that and those will be published by um, BMAA, LAA and um, the Civil Aviation Authority um, hopefully sometime in April ahead of the implementation in May. <clears throat>